from London, Ontario, Canada, and it's a city that has a lot of great music going on, fantastic choirs, excellent music education through the universities, and I started out, you know, inspired by my family. My dad was a church organist, and so I have happy memories of sitting by his side at the organ bench, my little feet dangling away, turning pages, being so worried, that, okay, I've got to follow exactly, and if I ever got lost, dad would, mm hmm and I could turn the page properly for him. I grew up in a household where there was always music happening. Mom was singing in the kitchen, dad was playing either on the piano upstairs or in the harpsichord in the basement that he and mom built. I know, I was the only kid on the block who had a harpsichord in her basement. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my earliest memories composing aren't anything structured. I'd sing along to the hum of my mom's washing machine and make up little melodies. And so I really began, you know, experimenting with music, making things up before I had any music training. As a young, young girl, I, I sang in choirs and I have people ask me all the time, what was, what was the best educational experience you had as a composer? Honestly, singing in choirs. I had conductors put music in my hands that was full of integrity, that was um, meaningful, that was carefully selected. And I can't think of a better music education as a choral composer than singing in choirs. I was very fortunate to have the same voice teacher, choral director for many years. I started taking voice lessons when I was a kid and sang in an excellent children's choir, the Amabile Organization of London, Ontario. And I sang under Jennifer Moyer, who was a tremendous conductor, tremendous mentor, who not only cared about the musical education of her students, but also cared about us as as whole people. I went to the University of Western Ontario to study theory and composition. She was there and I got to continue my voice studies with Jen and sing in her, her women's choirs. Um, I sang in, a, in her, her excellent choir, Les Choristes, at the University of Western Ontario, but then got the opportunity to sing in sort of a smaller kind of chamber women's choir called Project Sing. And it was a group of friends that sang a lot of my, my early compositions, a lot of my early arrangements. And to be surrounded by a group of women who were all my age, who were all sort of exploring what they wanted to do with their careers, with their, their musical lives. It was such a tremendous community. That's been a theme throughout my musical upbringing, my musical education, and then I hope what I do now as a composer is a sense of community, a sense of choral music bringing us together, sharing an experience, bringing our voices together, which is your body as instrument, right? It's such a personal thing and it can be such a connecting thing. So I hope that's, that's what I can do now from the other side of the curtain as the composer, bring music in to, to choirs that, that helps boost community and boost togetherness. I thought I wanted to be a performer for many years. I spent my high school years as a songwriter, essentially singer-songwriter in the cafes of my hometown at my high school. And I had, you know, music teachers in high school that always thought I was gonna go on to be a performer. But I hit university and I realized that what I was writing had more depth to it than I could sing. I always wanted to be able to sing in harmony with myself and <laughs> couldn't. And so, you know, having an education in choral music meant that that was just the natural place to go, was writing for multiple voices, multiple layers, multiple textures. And so I went from this sort of time in my life life as a, as a singer, songwriter, performer, to really being a composer and a creator. And I, I don't think I, I set out to be a composer. I think it just happened. After university, I actually was a teacher for many years. My career started out as, a, as an elementary school music educator. And I loved that. I loved working with the kids. But always, you know, I was composing. And so for a time, my, my career was more education heavy rather than, than composition, but as I got more and more commissions, I realized, wow, I think I can actually be a composer more. And so it, it transitioned from education to full-time composition. I taught elementary school nearly full-time for about five years, 
and to this day I still am a substitute teacher by choice and people say a substitute teacher by choice I say yeah I can't I can't leave the classroom fully my time as a music educator those five years in Sparta, Ontario, small town, were some of the happiest years of my life, some of the most intense years of my life, but I still keep in touch with a lot of those kids. They're in their 20s now. Um, I loved them. I loved them so dearly, and so that's why I can't leave the classroom now. But having a history as an educator, as a, a history of working with kids and, and seeing what excites them, seeing technically what is appropriate and and wanting to as a teacher myself select scores that have integrity put stuff in those kids hands that inspires them I hope now that that as a composer um, when I'm writing music for younger singers that there's a there's a bit in my music of, of what I was looking for as an educator